Um, yeah, so welcome to episode 32, Regular Drews. Yes, hello everyone. We're going to be covering another game today. Number 25, Alibi and Ashes. Well, aren't you a regular Nancy Drew? We sure hope so, and we hope you are too. Join us as we talk Nancy Drew cover to cover and click to click. Welcome to Regular Nancy Drew. Number 25 was released on October 18th, 2011. That was 10, no, yeah, you were right, 11 years ago Ugh. at this point. That feels what? weird, yeah. So old. But like 10 so and a half old. years, right? 10 and a half, yeah. yeah I mean, at any opportunity to, to lower the amount of years, let's do that. So 10 and a <laughs> half years. Well, and this one was released as a special, like, anniversary edition as well. They put, um, on the packaging, there was, like, a silver banner across the top of it to celebrate their 25th game. Interesting. Um, so this, um, this game was apparently loosely based off of case file number 43, False Impressions, as well as um, number 163 of the mystery stories called The Clues Challenge. Um, obviously, that has direct ties to this game mm -hmm. um because there is actually uh, the clues challenge inside of this <laughs> inside of this uh plot here so yeah uh i don't know anything about either of those but presumably false impressions is a case file where nancy gets falsely accused or something right <laughs> and the clues challenge is probably just like a a fun game that they do <laughs> one would assume oh an imposter's using nancy's name Mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to extort mm -hmm. people oh okay that tracks oh to extort people mm -hmm. okay oh man but how how badly do you want to do a clues challenge after playing this so game so badly <laughs> that's all i can so think about badly imagine i oh i would give anything to be to be a player in like a really good scavenger hunt mm kind of any anything that involves clues codes puzzles and like having to go places and mm. get things god imagine spending your summer running around running around town just solving clues across getting days. ice cream yes across days that's amazing yes all i mean i'm always the one who comes up with the scavenger hunts and the treasure yes. hunts and all the stuff <laughs> what i wouldn't give to be a player <laughs> yeah <laughs> you are very good at the puzzles but it does mean missing out on getting to solve them just got to get my um fulfillment through playing games on the <laughs> computer <laughs> yeah and we almost get to play a clues challenge but no we have to solve nancy getting out of jail yeah yeah okay so that kind of brings us into it Corey. <laughs> overall well, I guess we could do three words in three small phrases. Okay. I mean, teamwork, I guess. Mm, sure. S sort of. Sort of, except you don't have to at all. I mean, like, very, very loosely. Right. <laughs> Arson. Um, yeah. Old friends. I mean, because, well, yeah. like, uh, I want to get something that like encapsulates the idea of River Heights without like saying River Heights. You mm. know what I mean? Like history, community, maybe? community. That's a good one. History is a good one too, though. But also, I want to throw something in there that describes how I feel about it, which is like disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in concept, this is a very good game. Like when they right. announced this is what we're going to do. We're going to oh set this God. in River Heights. The next game, we're going to have Bess. We're going to have George. We're going to have Brenda Carlton. Ned, no Carson and Hannah, but they're sort of more involved in it than they yeah. normally would for other mysteries. So, Yeah, but but in execution. I was not just, as excited at the end no. of the game as I was to play it when it first came out, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so I guess just like maybe like teamwork can be encapsulated in like community. There we maybe. go. I like that. So like community, arson, disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's not 
a great summary. <laughs> no, art, arts and disappointment. Mm. Yeah. Community arts and disappointment. <laughs> It's a little bland. It is, which is very descriptive, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, do you want to just get into it? Yeah, let's go. Let's just get into it. <laughs> okay. So, at the start of the game, we're at Nancy's center of operations, mm-hmm. her desk. Um, so... <laughs> Well, there's a case file there, and it tells us that it's time for the annual River Heights Clues Challenge. So us, as Nancy, along with Bess, George, and Ned, are competing as a team in this week-long challenge. And the winner gets to preside over the opening of the town time capsule at the Anvil Day ceremony. And then the winning team gets to select something to put into the next time capsule that they're going to bury. So there is a note on Nancy's desk, um, and when you click on it, Nancy says it's an anagram from the Clues Challenge that gives us instructions to check the thermostat in the old town hall. So, like, as soon as we click on that, we're kind of, like, immediately pushed to the town hall where we just are now. Mm-hmm. Um, we're inside, and we go through this door that's in front of us. We, I guess we, like, hear someone. Um, we're like, who's there? And then the door locks behind us. Mm-hmm. Um, then we hear, like, this clicking noise and if we turn and look at um the thermostat and move closer to it on the opposite wall we see that there's a snowflake shaped ice cube melting on top of the thermostat then the thermostat shorts out sparks and the wall behind it just like catches on fire like so fast like so quickly like whoosh fast and we then have to escape (laughs) the burning town hall um by like crawling by like stacking a bunch of stuff and then crawling through a transom window and crawling under smoke out the right way out of the building it's very dramatic yes (laughs) (laughs) once we finally get out of the burning building we see that there are a bunch of townspeople just kind of standing i guess on the side of the road watching the the fire go up uh, we later learned that these people are Alexi Markovic, Theodore Shannon, and then a town councilwoman, Tony Scolari. Uh, we do also see River Heights 9 news team uh, anchorwoman, Brenda Carlton, who... Brenda Carlton! <laughs> uh, sorry, I'm so excited. <laughs> no, of course. She's one of our favorite characters from the Files book series, so we finally get to meet her in person. Very exciting. Um, but she immediately shoves a microphone in our face. She's got her camera crew with us and she starts asking us questions about, you know, why did you decide to burn down town hall? What was your motive in doing this? Um, and she's, you know, she's asking all these really leading questions of, you know, I, I don't even have examples cause it's really frustrating. <laughs> yeah. What made you decide to, uh, set the town hall on fire? Yeah. Um... What grudge do you hold Nancy? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, so this was just a spur of the moment decision. Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, I didn't mean, you do it. This. Yes. No. <laughs> but yes, um, the interview gets interrupted by Chief McGinnis, who I forgot to mention at the start is also in this game. I will argue <gasps> that he's perhaps one of the best animated characters the best. in the game. Yes. The best. Simply the best. Yes. <laughs> But he starts taking our statement of, you know, what happened, what color of the smoke, where were you when you saw the fire starting? And then we get to see a cutscene basically where Brenda is doing a report on television, basically accusing us of being responsible for the destru- destruction. And um, then we get another cutscene. Nancy is back at home in her room. She's on the phone with Bess talking about what had happened. And then our doorbell rings and we go downstairs and it is Chief McGinnis. Chief McGinnis knocks on her door, and he's come here to arrest us. He says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Nancy. My hands are tied. And he takes us to the River Heights police station and books us in. Um, uh, And then we're, like, legitimately in a cell in River Heights (laughs) PD, and we have to make a phone call because we've been arrested. Yeah. Um, So, obviously, we call our lawyer, a.k.a. Carson Drew, a.k.a. Dad. (laughs) And they're like, but he doesn't answer, which I'm just like, uh. (laughs) So we leave a message for him. And I just have to say that Nancy's message to him is like, hey, uh, don't worry. 
um, but I'm kind of in jail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fly home. Everything's fine. I'm going to get out of this, but it just like, what did you, I need to give you a heads up, dad. I don't need a lawyer for this. It's fine. I don't, I truly don't understand how Nancy is like, don't worry, don't fly home. I'm in jail. Why can't your father fly home when you're in jail? I, I, I don't understand. Um, Yeah. Maybe have to talk about Nancy's reluctance to accept help (laughs) and be independent. Um, But anyway. Uh, so, uh, after we call him, we can make other phone calls because apparently this is a situation where you just get one. So right. we call our friends. <laughs> um, and this is where the investigation kind of starts. So we ask them to find a note that led Nancy to the town or find the note that led Nancy to the town hall and drop it off the station because right. So we're thinking someone led us to the town hall. Mm-hmm. Um, and at this point, we can pass off the case to any one of our friends that we choose, um, which means that like we can play as them to progress the story and kind of pass it back and forth between them and Nancy to continue investigating. Luckily, the note is very conveniently just sitting outside the ground, uh, outside on the ground, outside of town hall, mm-hmm. which I'm just like, how is this possible? The town hall literally was set on fire. How is this one note the only thing <laughs> that survived? Not rubble. Anyway, um, as soon as we get that and deliver it to Nancy, we can pass the case back to Nancy. And Chief McGinnis basically tells us that's like, hey, so I'm not going to keep you locked up in here. You can't leave the police station, um, but you're free to investigate as long as you don't leave. And he specifically says, don't let me catch you messing with anything. But he says this with like very specific inflection, which basically just means that like, he's absolutely fine with us messing with stuff. <laughs> as long as he doesn't see us messing with stuff. You hear that? So, I said, don't let me catch you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And so like, we're literally like playing as Nancy drew in this police station, investigating as our friends deliver us clues. Yes. <laughs> and we are like, actually adding things to the police station case board okay now listen i cannot tell you how (laughs) crazy this is because it's like in what universe only literally only in nancy drew's universe i mean if we can i get okay (laughs) let's just like set aside the fact that they're allowing nancy to investigate Maybe, uh, I don't know, their very special relationship or whatever they have with Nancy Drew. But in what universe, if Nancy has been accused of a crime and, and for some reason this case does make it to trial, would this not be a mistrial? Mm. How is Carson not going to immediately <laughs> motion for a mistrial being like, hey, so... <laughs> <laughs> like, absolutely no, there's no way any of this evidence can be used because literally the person accused of the crime is running the tests on the stuff, literally pinning it to the evidence board. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, what? And the fact that there's no other police in the entire building that just is Chief McGinnis is holed up in his office. Nancy has free reign of the empty police station. <laughs> the front door is just unlocked. And yeah, well, it's unlocked leave. for Nancy when you're inside. But if you call and like you switch to Bess or George yeah. or Ned and they try to come in, it's locked. It's like, like you can't come into the police station. <laughs> so the police station is just not in oh. use this weekend because Nancy <laughs> is running it now. She it's can't so leave. Ridiculous. But she could just walk out the front door if she really wanted to. You do get a you do get a second chance scene if you try to actually leave. Oh, they'll catch yeah, you yeah, and pull yeah, you back yeah. in. But it's just, all right, Nancy. <laughs> also, can we talk about how there's like a drop box at the police station mm-hmm. for I guess for what for what purpose? Literally, other than this situation where people are dropping off evidence, are we assuming that the citizens of River Heights need a place to like? leave evidence after right. hours <laughs> it's not a library no this is not we not checking books out of the police station yeah what do they put what's what's the drop box for i know it's not where they pay parking tickets there is a town hall for that i mean it did just get burned down yeah but... <laughs> uh needles 
<laughs> is that the needle Maybe. collection spot? And Nancy's just Maybe. like, okay, I know you found a really important clue and we need to preserve the fingerprints on it, but throw yeah. it into the used needle drop box. And I'm just going to stick my hands straight in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Bring me snacks okay. too while you're at it. <laughs> that would be oh, funny. Yeah, Hannah. Hannah has delivered us a um, care package that is literally an unending supply of snacks, including yes. cocoa Kringle bars, the like moon chunk mm-hmm. candy thing, um, juice, endless juice, um, chips, fruit, apples, yep. chips. Yes. Um, literally, you can just stand there and eat and you could do that the whole game. The dream. Just what a dream. What a dream. <laughs> And what great snacks, too. I know. Anna has to have, like, some kind of crazy, amazing snack planning um, skills because uh, there is not a single snack in that box that I wouldn't eat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we do get a lot Sorry. of ice cream in this game, too, and we'll get there. Mm. We don't have a lot of great time wasters, as I like to call them, like mini games and stuff. We have a few, and they're yeah. not bad. But the main yeah. one is just eating. Just ice Eating? cream and Hannah's <laughs> snacks. and Oh, a game after my Taurus loving heart. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, love it. Anyway, our summary. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, so, yeah. So, at this point, we can, like, really start investigating. Um, and there are quite a few places that we can explore in this town. Um, we can explore the Drew home. Um, and there's also, um, so the whole town is n- navigable by this beautiful 2D map, um, very pretty art. And there are also so many Easter eggs on this map um, from the books. We were just talking about before we started recording, uh, Madame de Grand's Dance Academy is on here, except it's misspelled on the um, navigable map, but it's not misspelled on the map that you can find in scoops, which is very strange. Yeah. Just poor, poor editing. A little, a little snafu. They, is it like Madame Dugard or something instead of yeah. Dugrand? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, obviously there's Carson's law firm mm-hmm. is on there um, and we can visit that and hear his secretary talk. Um, and there are like all kinds of different locations for prides that we can stop by, but we can't actually like explore. Mm-hmm. Um, but the um, explore loca- explorable locations are um, the Drew home um, and the police department only for Nancy, who is locked inside. Well, not actually locked inside, but inside. Yeah. <laughs> um, Alexi Markovic's antique store um, outside. Occasionally the River Heights nine news van. Um, Scoop Ice Cream Parlor, owned by Councilwoman Tony Scolari, and the hangout for both Deirdre Shannon and currently Bess, and um, <laughs> the old burned down town hall. <laughs> uh, can we talk about how beautiful the Drew home is? I'm so glad we finally yeah. got to see it. Another huge highlight for this game. Okay, I have thoughts about this too, and maybe uh, I shouldn't jump in here since we're doing the, the summary, but... Is it or is it not the nicest house um, on this entire map? Yeah, it's gorgeous. It's like the only one on a cul-de-sac. And it seems to be, and I know this might just be like just the, you know, the way the art ended up or whatever. But like, it's the only one on that cul-de-sac. And it's huge compared yeah. to like all the other houses around it. You can even, there's George's house that you can see and mm-hmm. Bess's house that you can see too. And Nancy's is 100% the nicest. Mm -hmm. And so my thoughts here are like, "Mm, Nancy Drew and Carson Drew, the Drews, are definitely like River Heights royalty. Yeah. (laughs) They are definitely the upper Mm -hmm. crust here. Well, the map isn't the most accurate. Sure. sure, Well, for one, the house is like backwards on the map. Like the front door is somehow in the backyard. Like when you look Mm -hmm. at the bird's eye view on the map. Um, And also that like, it doesn't show the surroundings super well, like um, Mm -hmm. the antique mall, when you look at it on the map, it looks like a standalone building. But when you get there, it's actually like in a strip mall with several stores, same with Scoop. Um, And so when you're looking at the house, it looks like it's the only one in the cul-de-sac. But when you're in Nancy's room, you can see out the window, like other fences and other yards, Mm -hmm. and there's somebody across Mm -hmm. the street. So I think maybe there might be other houses there as well. But you're right, it is massive and magnificent and 
beautiful. <laughs> Nancy's room is a dream. It's so mm-hmm. gorgeous. It's all like sunny and like bathed in like this golden light. Mm-hmm. It's very idyllic yes. and um, very heavenly feeling, yes. you know. Gorgeous yellow and blue. <laughs> I think the upstairs is a yes. little. Oh no, the living room is green, isn't it? It's very mm. pretty. Yeah, like a sagey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was yeah. white, of course, white on everything and the nice floors. Yeah, I love it. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> it is gorgeous. It was time. It was time to show us the Drew home. It was time to show us more of Nancy's room. Is this, well, so I know this is the first time, obvious, and the only time that the Drew home is like explorable, but is this the first time that we see it like in its, enti- not, I mean, in its entirety, but like flashes of it? I know in the Silent Spy, we see their living room. Well, Again. that is after that's this after. game. So that's game number 29. Yeah. This is number 25. We do also right. see like little Nancy's bedroom. Um, and it, she's got a little mini lilac in dollhouse oh. in Silent Spy when she's like on the phone with Beth. She's like, oh, I hear my parents so, arguing. Uh, but we do in like the cut scene in the very beginning of the like, welcome to my center of operations. My, or the welcome to my room. Let me mm-hmm. show you around or whatever yeah. you see. And it looks more like an attic space. Like there's more dormers on like on the sides of her rooms. I don't know. So I think mm, it is yeah. slightly different than what we've seen in the yeah, past. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. yeah. But so this one and then in the Silent Spy are the only games that we get to like see other spaces in Nancy's house. Right. Okay. Well, I don't even I know if we see Nancy. other spaces. I think it's just the same rooms again. I think it's just the living room and partly her That's bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Which I wish we could explore more of it because really all we do get to see is the living room and her bedroom I and know. like a little landing oh. on the stairs that's, I guess, like a library study area. Yeah. I don't know if it's supposed to be Carson's study. Probably not. Probably not. Um, I wish so badly that we could explore the entire Drew home or at mm-hmm. least like be able to go into the, just the kitchen. Yeah. What I wouldn't give, what I wouldn't have given to have Hannah in the kitchen. Oh, of the I Drew know. Home and we could go talk to Hannah. Like, <sighs> I know. Like, oh, unfortunately, Hannah is not featured in this game. She's visiting. She's visiting Aunt Eloise in New York. Oh, that's right. Which is just like, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Are Hannah and Eloise like BFFs? Like, what's going on there? I hope so. Are they perhaps lovers? Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> A little weird with the long distance, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess. I guess so. Anyway. Anyway. Okay. Sorry. So, okay. <laughs> summary. So we'll get back to the, the Drew <laughs> yes. home later. Yeah. Yeah, 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 There's yeah. plenty to say about it. Uh, so I guess we'll go to the antique store first. When we get there, we can, uh, we can ask Alexi if he is the magnificent Markovic from the old stories. So um, apparently, yes, when he was a kid, he was something of a sleuth himself. He was actually kind of a famous kid detective in town when he was younger, like younger than Nancy was at the time. So maybe what, like 10 or 12 years old, like yeah, he was pretty yeah, yeah. young. But he he does now own this antique store, but he's not he does not seem too keen on discussing his past too much. Um, He is also very cynical about politicians. He says that they're all corrupt, that elections are all corrupt, um, just people in general, mostly Mm kind of have it out for each other, which he does say some very apt things in his (laughs) little spiel. (laughs) It's like, oh, he's very cynical, but he's not wrong. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) Uh, he does also tell us, uh, well, it depends on who you go in right, as. So you can right. play as Bess, George, or Ned. And if you go in as Bess, he she will, <laughs> yeah, she will accidentally, like, he has a stand with an antique base on it, like, directly behind the front door. And when Bess opens the front door, <laughs> she hits the stand and the vase knocks over and breaks. And he's very mean to her, actually. It is so like, so mean. I don't remember exactly what he says, but he basically tells her to get get out out of the store forever because how do you plan on paying for that? Oh, it was an accident. Well, I guess accidents are, you know, no problem. They just pay for themselves, right? It's it's very rude. But other than that. If someone talked to me like that after I had just accidentally broken something, I would cry. Yeah. I would absolutely cry. (laughs) I understand he's got to protect his store, but why would you put an antique vase directly in front of a door that opens inward? Why would you do that? It's so gonna that you get can knocked yell over at young women who walk in and make them feel bad. Yeah. 
But anyway, so we have to go back as George or Ned from now on. Bess is no longer allowed in the store. Uh, but if right. you do go as one of them and talk to Alexi, he will tell us that uh, when he was 20 years old and he had, you know, had a little bit of detective experience in his belt at this point, he turned J.P. Bennington, who was supposedly this powerful man in River Heights at the time, in. Uh, he turned him in for cheating his way into City Hall. The Bennington family was a very powerful family, apparently very, still is in River Heights. In fact, his Tony Scolari's brother-in-law is a Bennington, so right. not the Bennington, right? Just a Just member a of the family. Bennington. Yeah. yeah. Um, but apparently JP accused Alexi of stealing one of his father's antiques, which was a magnifying glass that supposedly belonged to one of the town's founders. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, that's basically the end of Alexi's detective career. He was basically an outcast in town. No one would hire him anymore. Um, I think like even his own family kind of yeah. didn't super trust him anymore. Um, he definitely doesn't get any more cases hired from this point on. So just kind of a, a really sad ending to his, his career there. And so now, you know, back of our minds, yeah. we're thinking, is this same thing going to happen to Nancy? Is he maybe mm -hmm. bitter towards Nancy? Um, right. There's definitely more to it here, but um, it, we can explore the antique store here. And we do actually find an alarm key for the old town hall. And if we ask mm -hmm. him about it, he gets very upset. It's like, I've never seen uh -huh. fire alarm keys before mm -hmm. in my life. Why would I have those? <laughs> He does also mention that some other characters were in the store earlier that day, kind of poking around. So that's suspicious mm -hmm. as well. Sure. Uh, but we do also find a few other things. There is an empty bottle of ether that's in a trunk in the corner of the store. We do find a notebook from his days as the kid detective talking about some of his cases. Uh, his final case, of course, being the J.P. Bennington case where he's accused of stealing this antique magnifying glass. Um, and then he did actually end up getting arrested, convicted, and then, you know, all the things that followed after that with no one trusting him anymore. He went to, he sent to, to prison. prison. Yeah. He went to prison. Yeah. Over a magnifying glass. I mean, I mean, I guess it was really expensive. Um, but it is just crazy to me to think that, like, a first-time property theft conviction sends you to prison. I guess. Like, first time. Or maybe, I mean, maybe there was a fine and he couldn't pay it or something, but, like... Mm, maybe. Wow. Uh, we do also find an article from around that same time period that mentions when Carson Drew was on J.P. Pennington's legal team for this case. Mm. So some more suspicion here. Maybe Alexi's trying to kind of get back at Carson for what happened to him by kind of making Nancy go through the same thing. My gosh. Very, very interesting. I will say specifically, so at the end of that notebook that we find where he's like writing about his cases, um, he... Because he talks about like his like arrest and conviction, and obviously he's very bitter and upset about all of it. Um, and there is some very spicy revenge talk in there that mm. specifically mentions um, he wants to see the quote unquote skyline consumed by flames. Oh, that right there. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so outside. The antique store is Brenda's van. Brenda Carlton of River Heights 9. Yes. <laughs> and if we go talk to her, I mean, we don't get a whole lot out of Brenda, honestly. She's incredibly dramatic. Um, and I think mm -hmm. that's just like part of her, like, you know, TV personality, you know, whole persona. Mm -hmm. But whoever we go to talk to her as, she is not inclined to help us free Nancy, um, mostly because she is determined to make a story out of Nancy's guilt, whether or not it's true. She does say that the fire is the biggest thing to happen here since old man Crowley's will was found, <gasps> which is an Easter egg from Secret of the Old Clock. Yes. Yes, but... Okay, so I made a note of this. Secret of the Old Clock, the game was set in Titusville in 1930s, oh. not River Heights. Inconsistency. Yes. So, Corey, does this point to your um, your theory of alternate timelines? <laughs> Possibly. I don't know. Because, of course, <laughs> the book Secret of the O'Clock is set in River Heights. But the right. Secret of the O'Clock, the game, was, you know, 13 games ago. That was game number 12. Um, so I don't, I don't think they were ready to show River Heights yet. So they were like, let's mm -hmm. set it in a different time period sure. in a different city. So is Titusville just 
nearby. I can't well, imagine that I it think, would be. I mean, regardless, regardless of thinking about how we think about the books and every single one being in a separate uh, reality, an alternate <laughs> reality of Nancy, um, I do think definitely we can at the very least put Secret of the Old Clock, the her interactive PC game, in a separate timeline from the rest of them, mm-hmm. since it does definitely take place in the past. Right. Um, so, yeah, I think we could probably excuse excuse <laughs> that and think of this as more of an Easter egg from the book, not right. the previous game. You know what I mean? They do want to like, pull from the books anyway right. for this. Yeah, that's a, yeah, because of all the other Easter eggs that they put in here from the other books. So yes. I think I think that tracks. <laughs> But anyway, sorry. Um, Yeah, no, anyway. Um, We do learn that Brenda is not satisfied being like this small town reporter. And she does really, really dream of making it big. Um, And she is actually hoping that Tony is somehow involved in the town hall fire. Because that would make the story national news if like a government official was responsible for like arson of like an old government building. Mm. Yeah. But she doesn't have evidence for that. But she does know that Tony was pressuring the police to take someone into custody. Interesting. Uh, Yeah. Why would Tony, you know, want Nancy taken into custody? Yeah. So after being unable to or being able to unlock the evidence locker at the station, which we're able to do after solving a puzzle, and with some help from our friends, um, we can see that they seized gasoline um, from the search warrant that they executed at Nancy's home. So if we can show that the accelerant used in the fire was something else other than gasoline, that will help our case. Also in the evidence, we can see that Tony was the one who called 911 um, and that for some reason, the fire alarm in the town hall wasn't working. Mm. Interesting. Uh, make a note of that. Yep. Um, and we can also listen to everyone else's witness statements. Um, and no one really has anything interesting to say in these, honestly, except Tony does say that Alexei uh, Markovic, the owner of the antique store, was there. And this is not the first time that she's seen him creeping around there. Interesting. So very much this is a situation of everybody is kind of trying to lay the blame on everybody else who was kind of around. Mm-hmm. Mm. I do like the uh, level of like police work that they throw yeah. into this game. Like yeah. we have an actual evidence board we get to play right. with. We do fingerprinting, lock picking, I think handwriting analysis at one point. Like it's some pretty good techniques that we don't really yeah. get in a lot of the other games. Definitely. Definitely. I think, honestly, I think that's one of the highlights of the game um, is the way that it shows and allows us to take part in the like actual investigation process, Mm -hmm. which I think like a lot of the other games doesn't really do focus Mm -hmm. more on like. Um, exploration and puzzling and, you know, talking to people and all that stuff, which I mean, is not not related to investigation, but this one is very much like. We are looking for very specific clues to point mm-hmm. us to very specific people. And we are actually going to analyze them and compare them and, and do all of that kind of detective work. So, uh, yeah. I definitely Just accelerants and all right. that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely think that's a strength of the game. Alrighty, next we are going to go to one of the best locations in all of Nancy Drew history. <laughs> Scoop, the ice cream True. parlor, which is owned so by true. Tony Scolari. Uh, this is actually where Deirdre is sitting out at a table kind of in front of Scoop, and then Bess is at a table opposite her, kind of staking her out. Um, <laughs> she is desperate to find a way to distract Deirdre so that we can rifle through her things and look through her stuff for clues. Good thing we have a secret weapon on our side oh by the name God. of Ned Nickerson. <laughs> oh. Deirdre supposedly has a pretty big crush on Ned, or at least sees Ned as something to be stolen from Nancy, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yes, Deirdre is also not a super huge fan of Nancy. We get a little bit of backstory that she is pretty competitive with Nancy. Supposedly her parents are constantly like, why aren't you more like that Drew girl? You should be more like Ugh. Nancy. She's all solving a mystery and whatever is Stan and you're just, you know, just here in River Heights, just being Can here. Can we talk time. about that, though? We'll have to talk about that later, because I have a lot to say about that as well. It's very interesting. Yeah. 
But yes, Deirdre has a little bit of an attitude and she definitely has this, I'm going to steal Ned mindset. Um, but we kind of ask her, you know, where were you during the fire? And she says, you know, I was out for a jog. Um, this is obviously not the truth by the way that she tells it. But after a <laughs> minute, we do eventually get her to tell us that actually she was there following Nancy. She she kind of assumed that Nancy was cheating in the clues challenge because she was doing so well. She was so far ahead of everyone else. So she figured, Oh, I'm going to follow her and she's going to figure out what the next clue is. And then I'll be able to get ahead as well and just go from there. Um, so she, um, she actually received a note or intercepted a note previously that was meant for Nancy. And then she like went to the, went at the time to the place where it said to meet, and then nothing happened because she assumed mm -hmm. Oh, you know, they were waiting for Nancy. So the other person just never showed up. She does give us that, that first note that she intercepted. It's in a plastic bag. So whoever left it for Nancy must've really wanted it to make it to her because it was raining that night. So of course, putting it in the plastic yeah. bag makes it easier for it to not get ruined by the rain. But it mm -hmm. also does give us the opportunity to dust for fingerprints. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's basically it with Deirdre, right? At this point, she, um, yeah. She just found that note and then a second note came along. And so she's like, yes, I will let Nancy take this one. Cause obviously the other person who I intercepted it from wants it to actually end up with Nancy. And that's how Nancy ended up getting yeah. the one that led her to the fire. Um, so like we were saying earlier, some of the characters will only talk to a certain one of Nancy's friends for Tony. Um, we'll get the best results if we're playing as best. She loves best, I guess, cause we're probably one of her best customers at Scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Tony tells Bess that she is currently running for a new term on the city council, uh, but she's actually having some money issues with Scoop. She's had to lay off some of her staff. Um, so she was, she tells us, you know, I was here at work at the time of the fire because we've mm -hmm. been so busy lately and I'm pretty much the only one working here anymore. But we also learned that she had to close the shop yesterday as well. So, you mm -hmm. know, which, which is it, Tony? Were you here at the shop working all day or, or did you have to close up because you were out on the campaign trail trying to mm -hmm. drum up votes? What, you know, what is the real story here? Um, so she also will tell us that Brenda is furious with Nancy um, because of a traveling antique show that Nancy apparently recently uncovered this whole scandal with, that it was apparently like full of fakes or whatever. And Brenda had apparently negotiated, negotiated a special over it, but the special got killed when Nancy broke the case. So um, this is a rumor. But apparently, one of the Heights Nine news interns went home that day with a broken arm, the day that Brenda learned that this special got canceled. How awful is that? Can you, I mean... A broken arm? A broken arm. How do you break someone's arm? I don't even know how you would do that. I mean, push someone down the stairs, I guess. Yeah. Like, mm. Wow. If that's true, it's a rumor. We don't know. No yeah, evidence to that. Just a rumor. Just a rumor. So at some point, Tony, if we're talking to her, or if we play the game at the back of Scoop for long enough, there's like a word descrambler word game. Swap. I don't know. Phrase? Or, yeah, word swap. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. Um, where you have <laughs> swap to... Swap a lot. Um, that's, that's what it is. Swap a lot. <laughs> where you can like solve these phrases. Uh, eventually she Tony will go outside to accept delivery like we'll hear a horn hawk and she'll have to leave um, and when she does leave we can snoop behind the counter we find that Tony has pictures of the old town hall pre-fire um, we also see snowflake shaped ice cube trays hmm. interesting and eventually if we can once we are able to unlock the storage room we find paint thinner that's a potential accelerant so this is not looking good for Tony. Mm -hmm. um, if we ask her about the snowflake ice cubes, she tells us, oh, aren't they so cute? Deirdre showed them to me in the, in the novelty shop. Mm. Hmm. So is it Deirdre who had access to these or knew about these? Or is it Tony? Or did somebody else go into this novelty shop? And find them right or is tony trying to lay blame right what's on going Deirdre? on mm. what's going on she does tell us that she has the paint thinner because she's constantly touching up paint in the shop which i'm like why do you need paint thinner to touch up paint that i yeah. don't understand but maybe i don't know i'm not a expert so i don't know that's okay <laughs> 
yeah, so eventually we can also lockpick her filing cabinet back in that supply room. Mm -hmm. And inside, we find that Tony has actually submitted an application to demolish the old town hall and then make like a build a new building in its place. But this is currently pending. So we don't there there is no uh, we don't know if it's going to happen for sure or not. Um, and also we find a record of Nancy Drew's detective, quote unquote, detective activities um, correlated, correlated with a drop in public approval of the River Heights City Council. Ouch. <laughs> Amazing. So obviously, Tony thinks that Nancy um, has a negative impact on you know, people's opinions, the public opinion of her, which is hilarious. <laughs> I just think it's so funny that like, she's actually gone to the trouble of making like this full chart. <laughs> of, she's like been tracking metrics. And <laughs> yes, Nancy Drew solved this mystery, 9% drop in approval rating. Nancy Drew solved this mystery, 22% drop in approval rating. Oh, oh, so funny. Which, okay. It's so good. Easter egg two. I'm pretty sure that all of these mysteries listed on this chart are Easter eggs to other Nancy Drew books. And in oh, fact, one of sure, them yeah. I know for sure is because it's the Nutcracker Ballet mystery. Yeah. We get another Easter egg for that, that um, Nancy, you know, helped restore a town tradition um, and like uncover, I don't know, uncover something. I don't remember what it said, mm. but very cool. Very, very cool. So at this point, we can go back over to the antique store where Brenda's van is parked outside, her news van. Um, and we can actually go in and we'll try to ask her some questions. And I think if we go as Ned, she mm -hmm. makes some yeah. weird advances toward him. It's very, Ned's very story. awkward. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, go on. She says... <laughs> I know, I know she says this to everyone, but I typically play as Ned because I feel like you get the most done as Ned. I don't mm -hmm. know why I have, I have that feeling. Um, so I only heard this when I was playing as Ned. She always says, and this might be too much innuendo. We might have to do this as like an outtake or something. But That's she okay. says, come back if you've got any hot tips. Mm. And I just have to say. Uh-oh. <laughs> is she talking about... Oh no! What is she talking no. about? Does she want Ned's hot tip? Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh man, that's. I hope we're just reading into that. Goodness, it's probably just me. I've got a dirty mind, mind in the gutter. That's okay. But... That's okay. <laughs> anyway. The ladies do like to flirt with Ned for whatever reason. He must be very attractive or something. Not that we get to see him. We get to I see know. Bess and George. Like, we see their character models in addition to getting to play as them. But Ned, makes we don't see Ned. I it don't makes know where me grumpy he is. That we can't see him. Because I feel like if maybe we could just observe how attractive he's supposed to be, maybe we'd get it. You know maybe. what I mean? I feel like we're missing something when it comes to that equation. And maybe it's his hotness level. Maybe mm. the reason why all of his <laughs> shitty behavior is excused is just because he's so attractive that everyone's like, well. That must be why they didn't <laughs> animate him and put him in the game. Because he, he wouldn't live up, you know. He wouldn't live up to the expectations. Like, so true. It's Nancy like, him? <laughs> Yeah, I bet that's why. Because you think like they can't they can't animate Nancy for the same reasons, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, not for like the attractiveness level, right. but like everybody has their own expectation in their mind of like what Nancy is and who Nancy is and whatever. And so animating her kind of like eliminates our own ability to picture ourselves as her right. or you know, see who we want to see when we see Nancy. And so maybe it's the same with Ned. It's because he's, you know, quote unquote, the boyfriend. Mm -hmm. He's got to be everybody's boyfriend. Right. So he's got to be vague still in our mind. Maybe it's the same with Carson too, because mm, he's going to look too, yeah, he's going to look too similar to Nancy or what we think Nancy mm. should look like, or he's not going to look close enough, you know, that he can be related to what we think Nancy should look like. Yeah. Or it'll just be, you know, creepy. That's true. You know, who knows? I don't know. I'd like to see Carson. I don't yeah. think that would ruin it. I'd like to see Carson. Me too. 
at least a character art. We see Ned's yeah. character art, but not a model yeah. 3D. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say Ned's character art's not that attractive to me. No. I feel like Ned needs to be like a 10 if yeah. we're to believe all of the things that we think about Ned. But then that takes away from his like every man, you yeah. know, kind of personality. Um, so I don't know. But Carson, I feel like we could do without any negative effects because we know certain things about Nancy's general appearance, right? No, she's right. white. You know, she's kind of uh, Titian haired, right? So right. reddish blonde hair. We know she's got blue eyes from, you know, the books mm-hmm. or whatever. So like we could get those features in Carson without like giving anything away. Right. right? So, meh. That's okay. Meh. We sort Sorry. of get to see oh Kate Drew. Yeah, we do. Silent Spy. See, this is well, another and- reason we need to play Silent Spy. It gives us more context yeah. for yeah. this game. Well, and Instead I think golf Kate ball. probably has looks more like Nancy than Carson does, and we fully yeah. see her. So Yeah, I think Kate's supposed to be the redhead of the family. Carson mm-hmm. probably has a different hair color then. Yeah. But anyway, anyway. anyway. <laughs> Oh my god can't help the asides in this one there's just too there's too many little bits to it it's, too it's river heights there's a yeah. lot to get into with river heights yeah. but anyway so we're at brenda's van she will not argue with ned or whoever goes to talk to her she will say i'll only answer your questions if you'll answer my questions and then she gets into this little verbal sparring match with whoever it is you send to go talk to her uh, but we can look around her van a little bit. And actually, if you ask her for your, her business card, you can call her, her, I guess, cell phone. It's more of an answering service that she has. And it's like, you've called Brenda's tip hotline. If you have a news story to report, say yes. Okay, you've said yes. You've indicated a breaking news story in the River Heights area. Brenda will receive your message directly. And then she's just gone from her van. Like she just goes and investigates, which where in River Heights, what's going on? She's just going to the vague North River Heights area to go yeah, investigate a lead, whatever. Yeah. It's it's too vague for me, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but we can get her out of the van basically. And now mm-hmm. we can explore a little bit more. We can get a fingerprint off of her microphone to compare for a match against that note in the bag that we found earlier. We can find some acetone, some nail polish remover in her like makeup caboodle thing that she has, which find me someone who doesn't own nail polish remover or isopropyl alcohol or something like that, yeah. just household items, but whatever, definitely still a potential accelerant. Um, and then we can actually, Nancy asked us to get fingerprints from everyone. So eventually right. we'll go and get fingerprints from everyone. Um, we'll actually learn that yes, the fingerprint on the microphone matches the one that's on the, the bag, the note in the bag. Uh, we do also ask Carson if he can um, get some, I guess, chemical analysis done for the accelerants. And so he'll send us a chart to the home. We go pick it up from the Drew home and then we'll be able to compare the accelerants that we found, which again is like the paint thinner for Tony, the empty bottle of ether, which I will add an empty bottle of ether is not an accelerant. Ether is an accelerant. Why would we hold on to an empty bottle? You know, like well, because we can show that like he had, he potentially had ether in his mm-hmm. possession at one point. I guess. But like, why, why hold on to the, like as Alexi, why hold on yeah. to that empty bottle? You know, why not just recycle it or something? Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but yes, we'll, we'll compare all the accelerants that we find. And we do find actually it was isopropyl alcohol and not gasoline. We haven't found isopropyl alcohol amongst <laughs> any of our other suspects items just yet. Um, but we do know for sure now that it was not gasoline. So this Nan- lets Nancy off the hook a little bit more. Yeah. So Carson does also tell us after we've asked him to look into it a little bit um, that River Heights security confirmed that the fire alarm in the old town hall had actually been switched off manually on site at 2.17 p.m. on the afternoon of the fire. Um, Mm. So this gives us us a very specific window to drill down into on our suspects. So if we ask our suspects where they were at that time, Brenda won't tell us where she was. (laughs) Alexi says he was giving a talk at the River Heights Historical Society, but we happen to know that that talk was actually canceled. If we push him on this, he says he was there that day trying to open the time capsule. So he says, yeah, I wasn't at the the talk, but I was there 
you know, trying to open the time capsule. But he won't say why he was trying to do that, but he is still adamant that he's not the one who turned off the fire alarm or started the fire. Mm-hmm. Um, Tony says that she was at the ice cream shop all day, but didn't she also tell us that it was closed? Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, and Deirdre will tell us that she was working on the clues challenge with her teammates at that time. She actually gives us their phone numbers to confirm this alibi. Um, but when we call them, one of them actually tells us Deirdre wasn't there at all. <laughs> she was supposed to be, but she was like hours and hours late. And so Ned gets tasked with distracting Deirdre again. And then we can look at some of the notes that she leaves behind at Scoop, which why would you just leave your stuff on the table at Scoop? I don't understand. Yeah. When did you take it with you when you went home? Whatever. She leaves notes behind. We get to look at them. And if we look through her stuff, we learn that she actually got a ticket yesterday before the fire. And if we give that to Nancy, we can look up the details about this ticket. um, And we can see that Deirdre was actually right near Town Hall when the fire alarm was switched off. So, so much for looking into alibis, because literally no one has one. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Literally everybody could have been there. (laughs) Yep. Makes it interesting. Uh Uh-huh. But at this point, we do have enough evidence to present to Chief McGinnis. Um, And when we do, he lets us out. And then we, as Nancy, can go and confront all of our suspects directly. This is not a big moment, actually. Like, some of the suspects will react to Nancy being out of jail. But if you go and talk to, like, Bess, they're like, oh... When are you doing this? It's not like, oh, hey, you're out of jail. Yay! Like, hey, oh my why God. didn't you call me? <laughs> we can even call Ned, and he's just like, what yeah. do you want? Yeah. Like, we're out of jail. Hello. We yeah. can't even tell Carson that we're out of jail. It's kind of a disappointing. Yeah. Well, and it's also at this point that what to do, like what we're supposed to be doing becomes very murky and mm-hmm. unclear. And it takes forever to figure out, wait, Ugh. what am I doing? Where am I going? Why am I doing this? Why is mm-hmm. this the way that we're finishing the game? Um, which we should also talk about. Yeah, <laughs> but, we will. Don't worry, yeah. we will. Yeah. <laughs> so we go and confront the rest of our suspects after we get out of jail. Both Tony and Deirdre stick to their original stories of we were out. We definitely weren't there for any nefarious reasons. Alexi is actually one of the few people that seems glad that we're out of jail saying that, (laughs) you know, I've been through it. I know what it's like when nobody believes you and you're stuck in jail. You can't really do anything about it. But we do also learn from him that after we ran out of the building, he was there. He saw us running out of the building and he decides that he is going to go in. He tells us that he was actually trying to get into the time capsule because he believes that Bennington whenever the magnifying glass got stolen years and years ago, Bennington said something to him or referenced something saying, I put it in a place that no one will ever find it for years and years and years. So Alexi believed, hey, he put this evidence into the time capsule, knowing that it being gone, we can't find it, is going to send him to jail, right? So he thought, you know, the last chance that I ever have of finding this evidence is about to get burned up. I'm going to run into this burning building and try to find it. Seems like a great idea, even if it means clearing clearing your name, right? But whatever. Um, Brenda, of course, doesn't tell us anything about where she was. She's she's Brenda, you know. But (laughs) (laughs) Nancy, for some reason, starts asking a lot of questions about the van. And can we look around in the van a little bit? And Brenda's like, no, of course not. Why would I let you look around in my van? It's just kind of strange, but we do need to get Brenda out of the van. So we go and we call her tip line again and then come back and she's gone. And when we do get the chance to look around in her van, we see a very tight like itinerary for her for the week, like a schedule of the interviews that she's supposed to do or the places she's supposed to be filming and the news stories that she's supposed to be putting on TV. Um, Very tight schedule for her to get to that interview, do the interview, and then also drive across town to get to the next one. It doesn't seem like River Heights is a super large, crowded, busy place with lots of traffic. But we do actually, if we talk to Bess um, later on, she'll tell us, oh, yeah, there was a lot of traffic on the day of the fire. And it took me like 45 minutes just to get from like, you know, my house to the store that I was going to. So, you know, it's impossible that Brenda would have been able to get across town in an hour (laughs) unless she had some sort of secret route that nobody else knows about. 
whatever. This is such bullshit. I know. It's a big plot <laughs> hole, but whatever. Um, she was, you know, it's just suspicious how quickly Brenda's yeah. been able to move move around town. We do also see in the van that Brenda is like mid editing of some footage that she has of an interview with Bess. Um, poor Bess is just getting yeah. all the difficult questions asked of her by Brenda. But in the background of this video, we can see that Deirdre is like on a phone call standing next to the old town hall. Um, and then if we like play with the sound a little bit, it's actually a puzzle that we have to do that um, we can hear, like we can tune into what Deirdre is saying on her phone call. Um, and she is basically just saying like, no, I can't find it. I dropped it somewhere. And basically now we have to go find whatever it is that Deirdre dropped. This doesn't make any sense to me. I have to say, this is the point where like things like really come off the rails and I'm like, yeah. what the fuck is going on? <laughs> um, but anyway, we can go to Scoop and ask Deirdre about what she dropped um, and she just tells us basically what we already know that like she was following Nancy and uh, she assumed Nancy was cheating because Deirdre was cheating. So I just don't really <laughs> understand. I still don't to, to this day. I don't understand what Brenda or sorry, what Deirdre was supposedly dropped and why that was important. I think we just we go back there, but we find Brenda's press badge, not anything from Deirdre. Or is I that never later in the game? I found that. You never found the press badge? Mm -mm. I, I don't know what the significance is. Because I went, I went to the old town hall because I was mm -hmm. like, okay, there's something else there. But there wasn't. And so I thought, well, was it just the note that we found earlier? And I just couldn't, I didn't find anything. And maybe I just couldn't, mm. didn't click on it or something. But I no, missed I don't it. Remember. Whatever it was. <laughs> oh, I don't remember what the significance was for it. Um, but yeah, so anyway. So since we are now at Scoop, this is an opportunity to check in with Bess and Tony, which we have to do. So maybe, I think maybe it was just supposed to get us to go to Scoop. Maybe. Which is like, but we don't want to talk to Deirdre, or we need to talk to Tony. So I don't, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Or like why they didn't just have Deirdre tell us what Tony's going to tell us. But anyway. So yeah, Bess does tell us about the traffic thing with Brenda and if we talk to Tony, Tony tells us that there are actually tunnels beneath River Heights that haven't been used since the Cold War, apparently. Love it. Um, and so who should we talk to about old things, I guess, <laughs> is what we're supposed to get from that. Alexi. And so if we go talk to Alexi about this, he'll tell us, he'll like pretty, pretty much help us out with this and shows us his notes as a kid. Because he's actually very familiar with these tunnels and used to, like, bust criminals in these tunnels all the time because criminals used to use it for, like, smuggling and stuff, I guess. So his notes are basically, like, a guide slash puzzle um, that will help us navigate these tunnels once we're able to find them. Mm -hmm. It does, his notes also tell us that there happens to be an entrance right outside of his antique shop, right where Brenda's van is parked. Mm hmm. Hmm. At this point, it's like, okay, Brenda's using the tunnels to get around town. Right. Confirmed. <laughs> we get it. We get it. Um, so we can go kind of confront Brenda at this point, telling her, like, we know it was you who left the notes to lure Nancy to the town hall. We know that because of her fingerprint, right? And she admits to that. Um, and we ask, like, are you trying to frame us or kill us? And she says, either would have made a great story. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this bitch! This bitch! Holy crap! So, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. Um, she does say, good luck convincing anybody else that this is true, because I'm going to be on air in like, you know, 20 minutes or whatever, telling everybody about how you are responsible. <laughs> um and so we ask, like, is this about the antiques show? <laughs> like, good grief, get over it, lady. Um, and she says, no, it's not about the antique show. This is about us, Nancy. Nancy is always screwing up, you know, my leads and getting in my way. And I'm sick of it. I'm trying to make it big. You ruin everything, Nancy. So now I'm going to ruin you, basically, is what this is. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, we have to find a way to stop Brenda. 
So I guess here comes here comes in game time. We rush <laughs> over to the Drew home where George Why? is sitting in the living room. Uh, we have to we have to give George the opportunity to do her tech girl thing. So yes. we're gonna give her that. <laughs> Um, George is like, oh, well, perfect. I just happened to be working on a radio signal jammer or whatever, television broadcast signal, whatever it is. Let me, um, you know, let me finish working on this. You go get me a battery. And then by the time you're back, I'll be done with this. We go upstairs, we get a battery out of Nancy's desk drawer. And then when we come back, we go back to give it to George. And all of a sudden a rock comes through the window and somebody has taped a note to it and says, arsonists will get a taste of their own medicine. And then George is like, oh, wow, the people in River Heights must be really upset with you, Nancy. And I guess this is just some random person that did this, not supposed to be one of our suspects, but whatever. We get the jammer so working. about this yeah. <laughs> later. <laughs> it's weird. Um, so George gives us this jammer, and then we go back to Brenda's van. We're able to, like, attach it to whatever without her noticing. And then we go down through, like, a trap door in the floor of her van down into the tunnels in the street oh no when we do put the jammer on something falls down from i guess whatever box she's working on right now um and this key this key falls down so we grab the key and then that leads us to unlock like this locked room in the tunnels right so in the tunnels the tunnels are gross creepy underground tunnels there are rats Mm. it's lovely and yeah, we find the door that the key goes to. And when we go in, we basically find what I can only call Brenda's lair. <laughs> Just imagine um, her down here working on this for months. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, inside we find enough empty bottles of isopropyl alcohol to burn down the old town hall. Which you're telling me Nancy didn't smell this isopropyl alcohol upon entering the building. Or on Brenda. like Right? You would smell that much alcohol. That's a I, lot. I don't know. I assume. Um, there's also a dartboard with the Nancy silhouette on it that <laughs> Brenda has been throwing darts at. <laughs> Too funny. Too classic. Um, and of course, very luckily, an entire detailed, well-organized, well-researched plan on how Brenda pulled off this stunt and framed Nancy. Apparently, Brenda even did like trials to see what specific shape of ice cube she needed to use to get like the result that she needed um, with the right amount of time. It's just, it's very calculated and um, bonkers ice cold. Yes. (laughs) um, Very good. Very good. (laughs) (laughs) I thought that was a great joke. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was good. Um, so we grab a bag full of that evidence, with also, which also contains a Nancy wig, I just have to say. What was so, that for? Brent, so Brenda was impersonating Nancy. I think that's what we're supposed to understand, is that Deirdre was following Brenda that because Brenda was dressed up like Nancy. So Deirdre mm. actually thought that Brenda was Nancy ah. when she was going around doing this stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but... You know, whatever it literally doesn't matter (laughs) um so um as soon as we grab that evidence and go to leave brenda opens the door um she found the jammer that we hooked up to her van so way to go us nice try whatever (laughs) um so absolutely didn't matter at all okay um and then she locks us in so we have to find a way to try to escape um, in time to stop Brenda from broadcasting the story about us for some reason. Again, I don't know why this is so, like, they put this, like, time-sensitive nature on it. I don't really understand why. Because, I mean, like, yeah, it would be kind of damaging probably to our reputation to have sure. Brenda do this or whatever. But, like, it's not going to, like, the police have let us go. The police yeah. aren't going to take us back into custody because of this news cast like we can still go give the evidence to chief mcginnis as soon as we can get out of here and they're gonna arrest brenda right. so it's like what i don't really get it they just try to make the moment more pressing yeah i know i know so. anyway so we have to get out and there's a hidden door behind the boxes in the corner that we can like take the hinges off and escape through and then once we do we get into like uh, these like rooms that have doors with like shapes on them. And we have to use Alexi's notes to take the right doors to get out of time. Mm-hmm. 
And just very luckily, just as we are climbing the ladder to freedom to get out of these tunnels, what's hanging there, Corey? What's hanging there right at the top of the ladder? It's a clues medallion. The clues challenge medallion. Mm -hmm. So not only are we going to be able to stop Brandon in time, we're also going to win the clues challenge classic. Was this it? Was that just, that's the prize? It's just hanging out in the tunnels this whole time and... That's what she needed to find? Or yes. is that just like I uh, think so. a milestone in part of the thing? I, no, I thought that was kind of weird. It. Okay. That's it. That's the winning, that's the winning thing mm. that you had to find. I presumably there are other milestones throughout, I okay. guess. But I think that's they're on the final one. The final one. Because so no one knows about these yeah. tunnels except for the criminals that work in town. You're telling me somehow Nancy didn't already know about these tunnels <laughs> okay, in for her real. hometown. But yeah. then we're going to send a bunch of teenagers and whoever else is participating in the clues challenge down into these tunnels to find well, the winning. I don't know. So it was hanging like right at the, like right underneath. So like mm-hmm. presumably it's just like under a manhole cover or something. Oh, okay. Like it's, it's you just not, reach down and get it. Right. You wouldn't have to go in, but yeah. So. <laughs> so like, Sorry. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked from the no, big ending good. here. You're good. So. We head straight to the police station, hand the evidence we found over to Chief McGinnis, and then watch as Brenda Carlton gets arrested on live TV, which is ah. incredibly satisfying, I have to say. Um, even the like the little ticker tape like news thing going down the bottom of the screen says, River Heights 9, River Hoarder, arrested on live TV. <laughs> Great. Imagine being the person like in charge yeah. of writing that in the moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, imagine because you're like Brenda's coworker and yeah. you're like, well, we got to air this. Like, you know, like imagine writing that copy right as you're watching your and just cracking up because, of course, everybody hates Brenda. Of course, everybody hates yeah. Brenda. I would laugh so hard. I would piss myself. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Chief McGinnis is just like, all right, back to you, Jim. Like, yeah, Chief puts McGinnis. His face in the camera. Chief McGinnis with the jokes. <laughs> Chief McGinnis really makes this game. He does. He's he a star does. character. Truly. You want to take the wrap up? Sure. So it's Brenda. It was her. She done it. Um, in the end, we learn that Brenda is now like working as a reporter from prison. She's like doing the weather <laughs> forecast, I guess, for I think fellow this is inmates. Just a joke, but I thought something. it was hilarious. Yes. <laughs> Um, Tony actually surprisingly was not involved in this as much as I wanted her to be personally. Mm-hmm. Um, her campaign does like like her her public approval rating plummets you know once all the details get released of how she was a little bit involved but not actually at fault for this she like loses her next election right Mm -hmm. then we find out that in fact alexi was right about his jp bennington theory that the guy did stash the magnifying glass in the old time capsule um it was like one of the only things that was salvageable from the old town hall so they did get to pull that out and he does end up clearing his name thank goodness So he is vindicated, and we find out that Carson is actually currently working on getting him exonerated of his past crime. So nice little wrap-up for Alexi there. They are um, going to now turn that old town hall into a historical museum, and they've, I think, they've asked him, or he's officially agreed to do it, but Alexi is going to be, or is supposed to be the head curator of the museum. Deirdre is still being Deirdre out there in the world. <laughs> she, she, um, after flirting with Ned the entire game, we find out that she had a little post clues challenge party at her house and Ned was invited. But of course, Nancy, Bess and George were not whatever. <laughs> um, and now the public is very apologetic toward Nancy. We get a little flash scene at the very end with Bess and George in her living room. And they're like, got all these gift baskets and snacks around them and flowers and the whole community is going to get together to repair the Drew window from the rock that got thrown into the living room. Please, Louise. <laughs> and then oh. we do also find out because they won the clues challenge, they get to choose what goes into the next time capsule because now they're going to put new stuff in it and reseal it. Um, and Nancy is like, I won't tell you exactly what I put in there, but if you think about it, you'll probably be able to guess. Well, I'm sorry. Roll credits to the Lost Queen trailer. What? What? 
What did they put in the time capsule? I thought about it. I thought hard about it. I Do you have any theories? Figure it out. I mean, the clues challenge medallion or like. This seems like a lame thing to put in. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? I'm like, I don't know. Snowflake shaped ice cube tray. I don't know <laughs> what you put in there. So I, I have a thought. Yeah. What? Tell me. Please tell me your thoughts. So at the very end, we, we flash back to Nancy's desk where we start the game, right? And she's telling uh-huh. us all this. Okay, so if you look at the desk, you'll see that her How to Be a Detective book is missing from that end scene where it was oh. on her desk at the very beginning. So I think that she okay. put her How to Be a Detective into the... Interesting. I mean, we use that book in later... I mean, that book is there in later games, like to reference yeah. if we want to. So. Right. I don't know. Maybe she got a new one. Maybe I mean, she that's has a multiple great copies. Theory. It's a great theory. <laughs> Coco Kringle bar. Coco Kringle bar. Oh my god, it's absolutely a Coco Kringle bar. Why didn't I, I hope think about so. that? That would be a good oh, one. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what should be preserved for history. Oh, oh man. I don't know, man. I think I, I had a lot of hopes for this game back then, and and playing it again. You know, I thought maybe it would be really great again. And it's just disappointing. You know, I feel like there was such opportunity for them to really create something super interesting. And instead we get just kind of a boring game. Yeah. You know? Like, I I, honestly, I don't think it would have been that bad if if the pacing was better. um, Okay, yeah. And if um, there was just a tiny bit more detailed backstory with the characters. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what we get out of the characters is all really straightforward. It's, like, all related to the crime. We don't really get... I mean, aside from, like, how they feel about Nancy, Mm -hmm. which is not related to anything specific. It's just kind of general about how she's ruining stuff for people. (laughs) We 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 don't understand, like, their relationships. We don't understand really what they do. Or why they're there. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it's all very general and vague. And so I think it really would have been a little bit better, or so much better, if we could have just had a little bit more detailed about these people's lives and their interactions with each other. And and then also if we could have fixed the pacing issue. Because the <sighs> the way that it goes from, like, okay, we're trucking along, we're solving the mystery, to, like, wait, what? is yeah. is happening at mm-hmm. the end here there are a lot of plot holes in that too that i think i would like to see fixed as well and i think honestly i think it probably points to they probably had to kind of rush to finish this game it seems like Maybe. a very rushed ending seems um, like but i we should have been heightening the stakes from like moment one you know right. what I mean? Like that rock being thrown through the window at the end of the game should have happened at the fucking beginning of the game. Yes. Like, yes. That needed to happen a long time ago so that we felt the pressure of like people like starting to turn against mm-hmm. Nancy. And so that we as like the player understood the significance of like Nancy being in jail like the moment they arrest nancy is great and i think it's great that they started off the game that way but then as soon as we actually get to start playing through pressure's off chief mcginnis freaking lets us out of the cell yeah. he lets us walk around the police station we're like okay so we're not bothered like we're not worried yeah. we call carson we're not worried we're like don't worry about it dad we'll figure it out we call our friends our friends are sympathetic but not worried you know yeah. what i mean so it's like what we needed more of that pressure from the beginning and then we needed to maintain it so that when we got to the end, we really felt the need to stop Brenda from saying whatever it was she was going to say. Right. You know what I mean? Like we would have felt like, okay, the town's going to like murder us. (laughs) Or like the town is going to burn down our house if Brenda goes and says what she's going to say, you know? Mm -hmm. And said it was just kind of like, why is this important? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Like like you were saying, the newscast thing just didn't feel like that much of a pressing problem. Yeah. Like, even Nancy herself is like, when Brenda's like, oh, that's for the public to decide. Nancy's like, oh, that's, or it might be is one it? of her friends. But they're like, yeah. is it for the courts to decide, though, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they, like, don't think it's a big deal that the public opinion might be swayed against mm-hmm. her. But then we do have the rocks coming through the windows. You're right. It should have been 
should have been way earlier. Been drummed up a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. It should have happened before Nancy was arrested, honestly. Yeah. We should have had a moment where, I don't, we should have had, I feel like we should have had a little bit of time before Nancy was arrested to actually navigate, right? Right. Even if it was just literally going downstairs and talking to George. The rock mm. comes through the window. Then Chief McGinnis comes to arrest us. Then <sighs> as we're playing that as, so good. wouldn't it? <laughs> then as we're playing as Nancy's friends, her friends needed to receive the same I mean not to the same extent but they needed Mm. to receive the pressure right they needed to get like discrimination for associating with Nancy they didn't they needed no sympathy right they needed much more walls like put up right threats coming in or something aren't you friends with that Drew girl like I'm Mm -hmm. sorry you're not welcome here you know like we needed that we needed that level of stuff that would have been nice so instead it's get out you broke a vase right right Mm -hmm. mm-hmm mm-hmm we needed, we could have heard, like, if we were playing as characters, we should have, like, heard, at, like, people say things to us in passing. You know what yeah, I mean? That would be like, good. we wouldn't have had to have any animation. It could have been when we were driving, like, driving around to the different town locations. People could have been saying stuff to us. You know what I mean? <gasps> that would have been really nice. Wouldn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The whole game just kind of felt tedious to me because. Mm-hmm. Well, one, one big issue that I have is you can't just like call another character to change characters. You have to yeah. be somebody else, call Nancy, and then you can change. You have to go through Nancy to change characters. You can't just be Ned and call George and change to George. So anytime you're needing to do something, it's like, oh, well, I have to make three different phone calls just to get to be the right person that I need to be so I can go to this place. Cause if I'm best, Alexi won't talk to me, but if I'm Ned, then Tony's not going to give me all the details. Then Brenda's not going to do this. And Alexi only likes George. And yeah, it's just, it's kind of, it's very tedious because you have to do so much changing and they try to like force a reason for the change to be necessary. So that like you were saying, you like to play as Ned cause you get the most out of him unless you're like doing this, in which case it's more beneficial to be this character. And it's just like, Oh, I have to remember who's going where and what's going on and who has what in their inventory was the annoying part to me. And who has what in their inventory? Yeah. They put it on the phone, but then you have to go through and read the whole thing and remember who has what Mm -hmm. and where you've been and what you've already done. And there are some conversations that like best needs to have with George. So you have to call, you have to like, become best and then call George and then call Ned and then call Nancy again, just so that you're getting the whole narrative. And there's all these different conversations that will only take place if you're playing as this character, talking to this character. So there's like 16 different combinations of conversations that you could have just amongst Nancy and her friends. Mm -hmm. And then they'll reference things that happen. And then you'll go like, Oh, did you see what Brenda has been saying about us in the article? Well, no, we haven't even had a chance to read the article yet because the right. newspaper hasn't come for the day. And it just seems yeah. uh, it's very, very tedious in that way, just trying to get through the game itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And none of it really adds to the mystery, you know, right. like they're just trying right. to force you to play as different characters so that they can say, oh, you get to play as all four people. Mm-hmm. Meh. <laughs> yeah, I will say what, and especially like that's not even something anybody ever asked for. I feel right. like like we didn't ask to be able to play these as these characters. Sure, it's cool or whatever. And then maybe we asked to play as the Hardy Boys because obviously. Mm-hmm. But like we want to interact with those characters, you know? We want to have the opportunity to talk to those characters right. and see them, right? In Anim- animation. We want to see the animation, right? We want to feel like we're in in River Heights talking to these people. Right. So and that we don't really get, especially as we're playing as them we like get the opposite effect you know Mm -hmm. yeah no it just feels like all of these issues honestly were could have been really simple fixes Mm -hmm. and not something that would have like changed the structure of the game that much and would have really improved the playability of the game yeah like Mm -hmm. being able to call like being able to be net and call best and say hey i'm passing the case to you right like what does that take that takes nothing nothing because you already there's no have benefit that of that code. over nancy right. <laughs> right so just give the option to the other character to do the same thing yeah and that would have been easy easy peasy and then like implementing like really small things to really heighten the drama 
like without any additional animation, just some little bits of narration or like introducing a couple threatening notes from people. Yeah. Like uh, changing, I'm sorry, but changing the music design, like we needed we needed more scary or like more ominous music to mm, make this more danger game be more danger. And you could have done so much of that by getting rid of some of the cheery river Heights daytime music. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> like I understand like we get the vibe of river Heights, but like at certain points we need to understand the threatening nature. Like if we're really trying to make this about Nancy's reputation, we need to understand what damage to Nancy's reputation is actually going to mean and what that's actually going to do. So we need to feel that, right? We need to feel it. And the way to do that, a good way to do that would be for music. Right. And that's easy, right? Like yeah. there could have been so many small tweaks that would have made this game so much better. Mm -hmm. And that's, and so that's why it's disappointing because I feel like it wouldn't have been that challenging. Right. But it does just feel rushed. It felt, it felt, it especially playing at the end, feels super rushed and like, uh, it, it, it's very incomprehensible. I do like how much like questioning we do of each suspect, but it still felt so obvious to me from the beginning that it's Brenda, <laughs> that all the rest of it kind of feels like a waste of time. And then when mm. we do narrow in on Brenda, it's like, okay, go, 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 go. We're not really giving you a real reason. It's just this ominous broadcast that's going to come and supposedly right. might ruin everything for Nancy. Yeah. Especially considering the fact that Brenda was literally willing to kill us. Yeah. Right? That's way more threatening than some, like, news broadcast. Shouldn't she just try to kill us again? Like, right. wouldn't that be <laughs> far? I mean, important? maybe that's what she thought she was doing when she locked us in the tunnel room. Like, True. Did she know that there was another way out? Because otherwise, she might just think she's leaving Nancy in there to starve. I guess. But, just like, that's dark. not... We have plenty of time to get out. Like, yeah. If, like, <laughs> you know, like, we're not going to starve and... You got hours, days before that's right. really going to be an issue, you know? Right. <laughs> so, like, it's not even that threatening, you know? <laughs> like, there's a vent in here Nancy's going to get out, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> she has her cell phone, so she's fine. You know, she right. could have called for help if she I needed do think, to. I think there's no signal in the tunnels. Mm. Well, that makes, I don't remember, makes sense. I don't remember trying it this time, but I feel like there's no signal in the tunnels. But... Yeah, there could have been, I mean, Brenda could have tried to gas us in the tunnels. Oh. Like, that would have been, I mean, and obviously she's she's done freaking, like, scientific trials on which ice cube she needs to use. She could have gotten her hands on some kind of gas to, right. you know, that we have to escape, right? Or we could have, like, I don't know, been chasing her instead of, like, mm -hmm. trying to escape. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that would have felt more urgent. Like, if you don't follow in time, she's going to get away from you. you know? Right. But that would have been a lot better. Right? <laughs> I don't know. So, slightly disappointing. Fun for all of the Easter eggs that were in there. Yeah. You know, fun to, like, be in River Heights. Fun to get to feel like small town vibes. Um, clues challenge. That's fun. Fun premise. Mm-hmm cool premise poor execution <laughs> yeah yeah they had to do a nancy's the suspect at some point what better way to do it than in river heights with all of her besties yeah but in execution it was kind of a letdown okay let's talk about deirdre shannon <laughs> okay and then we have to talk she's about like, Bess and george <laughs> yeah she's like number one on my list to talk about because i yes. love deirdre so much i know you told me she's very divisive and i totally believe that understand yes. why i can see why people would find her very annoying right because that's <laughs> kind of the purpose of deirdre but i love deirdre i feel like deirdre is a woman on a mission she knows what she wants she knows what she's about she's not bothered by other people thinking things about her she's like this is who I am. You deal with it. Yeah. Kind of a thing, which is just like, Oh, excellent queen. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we stand. Um, yes. <laughs> Once you get to know her, she is very interesting. She's also hilarious. She's mm -hmm. so funny. And like her mannerism, she's like, that's And like, just like <laughs> the way, like she leans back and like crosses her like wrists 
is mm-hmm. so <laughs> hilarious. I will say, so I, one, her parents sound awful. Um, and way to go, Deirdre, for not being as awful. They're, like, talking down on her for, like, not being enough, like, Nancy or whatever. But if we read her notes, we learn that she's studying criminology in school. I'm pretty sure she's a college student. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like she's some, like, slacker layabout. She's in school. Like, chill out. Clearly she has goals. Clearly she's very motivated. Like, she's at least motivated to, you know, maybe maybe the goal is to steal Nancy's boyfriend or, you know, win the clues challenge or whatever. But it's not like she's just, like this lazy loser you know what i mean like she's she's doing stuff so uh, (laughs) and she's gone out of her way to join this clues challenge with people she doesn't frankly like very much so she's she's got some ambition here definitely we just don't live up to what her parents think she should be living up to which is yeah not a a failing on her part i don't Mm -hmm. think yeah so anyway, I'm also team Deirdre. Please take Ned. Please take him. Nobody That's wants fine, him. Yeah. Um, That's kind of might want him. I think. That's maybe, true. But... That's true. But yeah, I think so. God, she says something about Nancy in the game that I should have made a note about, about how like Nancy's not all she's like cracked up to be or something. Oh. Um, and I mean, she certainly doesn't have a high opinion of Nancy. And I think a lot of that probably has to do with the way her parents treat her um, and compare her to Nancy. Of course, she has to think poorly of Nancy so that she can maintain her own, you know, idea of self-worth. Sure. Um, but I just, uh, I kind of agree. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Nancy's not the greatest friend just because no, she's, she's out. Not like solving all these mysteries or whatever doesn't make her hot shit like yeah. you know so i'm i'm kind of team deirdre come at me come at me <laughs> deirdre's also not the greatest friend either but she doesn't pretend sure. to be she doesn't to be pretend fair. to be thank mm-hmm. you yes she doesn't pretend to be she's like this is who i am take it or leave it and yes. then she says about her friends like oh god what does she say because when we call them for their or to check her alibi we like mention something to her about it, don't we? Yeah, we tell we tell her that like one of your friends, you know, like didn't vouch for you or something, right. and she like sighs and she goes like, "Ugh." She's like, "Well, you know, they're not. Uh, I can. They're still. We're still within the ninety day return window. Like yeah. I can still return them. <laughs> they're in their trial period. Yeah, they're not the real period. friends yet." <laughs> I will say that if you call one of those girls back and are like, um, the other person didn't vouch for how you alibi Deirdre, the other person didn't. And they're like, um, well, she's awful anyway, so that's fine if you don't believe <laughs> us. <laughs> she's never on time. She never is where she says she's going to be. <laughs> yeah. All right, Deirdre, what's really going on with you? You're just following Nancy or Brenda in a wig? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so I love Deirdre Shannon. She's fun. She's fun to talk to. Like, I'm sorry. Yes, great energy. And like, even on a phone call, because we get her as a phone character later, like, she's got good energy. Mm -hmm. She's fun to talk to. Also, can we just talk about like, she's in school for criminology. Nancy's never done that. Yeah, Nancy's not going to college. Would her parents rather... I'm not saying that Nancy needs to go to school or that anybody needs to, you know, go to school if they don't want to. But I'm just saying that, like... Don't tear down the person who is in school. Yeah, in some people's eyes, that's more accomplished than Nancy. You know what I mean? Like... (laughs) Don't have to make Deirdre feel bad about herself because she's not solved mysteries. Like, clearly she's working on herself. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) It's not easy to go be in college. Like she's mm-hmm. she's doing something. It's just not well, exactly like, the why, same thing Nancy's doing. Why are we shitting on her for like trying to do the same things that Nancy's doing when we idolize Nancy for doing the things that Nancy's doing? Ding ding ding. Is it just that like we we find Deirdre annoying? Is that it? Maybe. So like that's shitty. You know? Yeah, like, that is really <laughs> like, awful. Yeah, like. No wonder what she's following it? Nancy around town. She thinks that that's what's expected of her. Go be more like think, Nancy. 
it might slightly be the boyfriend stealing aspect of it. Mm. But she's not, I mean, just because she's hitting on Ned doesn't mean that, like, she's she's not, like, sabotaging their relationship by doing yeah. this or anything. She's just signaling her intention, which is like, yeah, I'd like to be in a relationship with Ned. She's very open about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ned can take it or leave it. Ned doesn't have to be around Deirdre. Mm-hmm. Ned's the one who came to Scoop to talk to her. Ned is so weird about Deirdre the entire time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, can we talk about the uh, morally bankrupt situation of him asking her out so that mm-hmm. they can snoop on her? I mean, yeah. like, if we're talking about teams here, the people who are doing the real crappy behavior is team... Nancy or whatever they named their team name for the blue challenge. Probably I forgot, Nancy. Yep. <laughs> is because they're literally manipulating Deirdre's emotions mm-hmm. to try to, you know, get the information that she has. Like, which I understand as like being an investigative technique or whatever, but like Deirdre's not doing that. Right. No wonder she thinks she has a shot with Ned. He's literally asking her out on a date. <laughs> yeah. What is she supposed to think? Right. He asks her out twice. Yep. Twice. Once, he stands her up, which, oh my God. Yeah. And the second time, he asks her out again. Which I feel like Derek is smart enough to be like, mm, something else is going on here, but really? that doesn't happen. Right. But I mean, she's still going to go. <sighs> also, free food. Free food. Mm-hmm. Right? If someone asks you out. Go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that they bring her back later. I don't I don't remember her from the mystery stories or from the files. I want to say she's from... Did we decide it was the Clue yeah. Book or the uh, Clue Crew? I believe so. I forgot what I... I, I looked it up. Girl Detective. <gasps> oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so Sworn yes. Sworn enemy since they were in first grade. Oh, okay. I know um, that there. I know that our Nancy Deirdre shippers are out there. If you if you're listening to this, let uh, us know who you are. I'm sure you're a smaller gosh. group, but that's okay. I think I might be there. Yeah. I could get there. I yeah. I mean, I mean, honestly, I don't think anybody should be with Nancy because I mean, aside <laughs> Nancy's from Frank not going to treat them well. No, because she's awful. I'm sorry, yeah. she's awful. I mean, love to be her, right? Love yeah. to be like her. Being in a relationship with Nancy does not sound fun. No. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, like, not even being a friend of Nancy sounds very fun, to no. be honest. But, I mean, like, if anybody could hack it, gotta have a strong, gotta be strong. Jojo would not put up with Nancy's BS. Like, Ned right. just lets her walk all over him. Jojo would be like, listen, Nancy, this not. is how it's gonna work. <laughs> Deirdre would also be right there next to her in that's every true. mystery because she wants to like that's that's what she wants to do i love midnight in salem every time you turn around deirdre's in your face Deirdre's just there so creepy <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh. i should forgot about that yeah oh that was so bad yeah sorry anyway so, and and also like they say that like when you get into a relationship you start becoming like more like more like person. Mm-hmm. she wants to be nancy she does indeed so, I think it could work out really well for Nancy. You know, Nancy's into using people. Deirdre seems like a skilled, a driven young woman. Yeah. I think, I think it could work out really well. They also have a lot of history, right? And mm-hmm. that can build good relationships, right? Yeah. Like, apparently they've known each other since first grade, grew up in the same town, probably are of similar, you know, backgrounds as far yeah. as like, you know middle class or upper class socioeconomic yeah right it tracks it just makes sense right strong similarities strong basis but they would also challenge each other mm-hmm. that's not the worst that i've ever heard of it's not <laughs> indeed <laughs> oh god what i would give to not have a uh, heteronormative answer your own that too yeah that too well, that's part of it that's yeah. part of the problem that's true it's part of the problem because it has to be a boy yeah mm. <laughs> mm. 
can we talk? I didn't trigger it in this most recent gameplay that we just did, but if you call Ned at the very end, you can send him to Mapleton and he just won't come back. (laughs) (laughs) It's like they almost forgot to finish Ned's storyline because you can call him and be like, hey, Ned, Brenda's like about to do this broadcast. And he'll be like, okay, I'll go talk to these people in Mapleton that I know and see if they, I can get them to like stop the broadcast at the news station or whatever. And so he's like, all right, go into Mapleton. And we just never call him to let him know that it's fine. And he doesn't need to go anymore. Oh my God. (laughs) I didn't know that. That's. Well, of course you don't, because why would you call Ned when you don't need to? Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Wow. Yeah, mm. love it. I mean, what Ned has needed to do since Clue in the Broken Locket is go home to Mapleton. So. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> <laughs> love it. <sighs> okay, you wanted to talk about Bess and George. They did them so dirty in this. Yeah. George looks like she has bug eyes. They're massive. <laughs> Bess is fine, except for her hair is a rat's nest. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with her part. It's like overlapping, yeah. like basket weave on top of her head. It's really strange with all sections of hair going in different directions and overlapping. And then even her character, like her 2D art of her character is like that. Yeah. She just looks so bad. I'm so sorry. Like we waited so long for another Bess and George appearance. And then this is what we get. Yeah. Even like... Ransom George isn't great in that one either, but even Bess's character model in that one is much better mm, in mm. Ransom the Seven Ships. Like when she, mm-hmm. we only see her for a very little bit at the end, not to spoil it for anyone, but like take that character model and use use her. Yeah. What is yeah. this? Yeah. A few games later, we're gonna get Shadow Medallion. They look way better in that game. Way oh, better. Yeah. Oh, Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, I think that that's Medallion. the best. Yeah. Bess and George is Shadow Medallion. Even for as many faults as that game has, they do best in George very well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, especially George. I feel like George yeah. comes off really well. Um, yeah. in that she looks one. great for yeah. comparison. <laughs> and I mean, like, it's definitely not the reason, like, I play these games. You know what I mean? Like, no, the, the animation not. is definitely not. And because it, it's just, I mean, it's not. These are point and click games. That's what they're supposed to be. Yeah. And while, like, the animation is like appreciated like and like the effort um it's definitely not like the reason i look for them like i wouldn't recommend you these games for their animation because none of them are like that great you know what i mean not to say that they're not beautiful in their own in their own ways and like in what they do um the animation is not the is not the beauty (laughs) not the i mean yeah but again, it's it's low yeah. priority for for us anyway. It's not right, right, right. Yeah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but, but yeah. I just think it's funny. That's that was the only thing I wanted to talk about with them. It's just the character models are bad. Well, when you have like <laughs> unattractive character models, it's kind of like mm. Chief McGinnis is better. Chief, Chief McGinnis, McGinnis is the best character model in the whole game. He the animation looks exactly how excellent. I picture him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, exactly as you picture him with like the the walrus mustache. Yes. Like, <laughs> like so classic classic Mm. stocky male police chief graying beautiful beautiful we do get a little tiny peek at nancy at the very end when she goes yeah Yeah, we see just like the classic silhouette with the curly like hair Mm -hmm. on her through like the window in chief guinness's door when she's like handing over the final evidence to him it's like (gasps) yeah that was nice yeah, but honestly, like, I don't have a whole lot to say about this game in general, just because it, there's not a whole lot to it. There's um, really not. Like, most of my thoughts are about the sloppy ending, um, Deirdre, obviously. Yeah. Deirdre. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, the poor pacing. There were so many times when I got stuck just because I don't want to have to yeah. call, make eight different phone calls. But I don't know what else to do. But then I have to wait for these phone calls. Yeah, it's just... Well, that's the thing, right? Is that, like, I've played this game... This is probably, like, I don't know, my fifth or sixth playthrough of this game. Like, 
um, easily. And like, still, when I was playing it, I was like, what am I supposed to be doing here at the end? Like, I knew at some point I had to go talk to George to do the thing. But like, Mm -hmm. if I hadn't have known that from previous playthroughs, how on earth was I supposed to know to go to the Drew home to talk to George? Right. we're never told that she's set up there. She's no. only there at the very end. She, we, right. we don't see her before the end. And, like, what reason would we have to go to the Drew home? Everybody, all the other characters, everything else is out in other locations. Like, mm-hmm. why would we do that? And so, really, if you're playing it through the first time and you don't have a walkthrough open, mm-hmm. like, you're just, like, going to different people, talking to them in circles and, like, calling people. And it's like, well how how are you supposed to get there right like it's well by making every single phone call like once an hour which is ridiculous yeah 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 (sighs) Yeah. um can we talk about how the winner the prize for the winner of the clues challenge did you just get to pick something that goes into the time capsule that's lame it is lame. Right. I mean, it's, it's a lame an exciting thing to do, but it should be yeah. in addition to cash or yes, cash something. Prize. Thank you very much. <laughs> cash prize or at least like a plaque that gets mm-hmm. put in the town hall forever. And, right. You know, like something more commemorative than that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's see. I think my Perks only other fancy thing being white is. Um, Alexi, I I don't remember exactly what it is that he says, but we do get kind of a hint at like a potential future spinoff opening, like into maybe we go back into Alexi's past and help him with something, or he like teams up with Nancy in the future for another River Heights case. We get kind of a hint at that. Of course, it never happened. He says at the end, they say that like he he's now that like his reputation has been like restored or something like we asked him like you know does he want to get back in detective work and he says definitely not but he's mm. happy to help us on any future cases if we need yeah so yeah I, yeah i think there's something else as well it's just like <gasps> maybe they were planning i just want to speculate maybe they were planning something yeah. at the time and that would have been really cool to have like an alexi game and yeah. like have him call us be like we need this you know they called me but i'm not willing to do it but i'll mm-hmm. be like your oh, mentor yeah. as you solve it nancy oh, kind of yeah. thing how good the would that have been? could call <gasps> him yes yes if you, i know you guys can't see me right now but i'm wiggling my eyebrows suggestively yes <laughs> um yes no i that would be amazing because you think like okay so now he's been restored right so the benningtons mm-hmm. have some mystery now and now they can you know maybe they feel bad at the way their That'd ancestors so... kind of treated him treated yeah. him and they're like we, but we also like we just they're aware of him right and so they have yeah. some mystery that would have been so good and mm-hmm. then it could have been set in river heights or uh-huh. mapleton even like somewhere mm-hmm close by and we get to solve that mystery what titusville oh titusville yes (laughs) we go back to titusville 100 years later and it's still nancy (laughs) well so if we were gonna have like a game spinoff thing with alexi that would be so fun if it was like alexi back in time like (gasps) alexi like it could have been like a period game of him and like when like the 70s or something or whatever or the 60s wouldn't (sighs) it have been Yes, I don't know how we could place Nancy in it as well, but that would have been really cool. Well, we could place Carson. Oh, Oh (laughs) my God. Yeah, and he would have been like, it would have been a kid detective game instead of like a more like teen detective game. It would have been more. I'm obsessed. We needed this. We needed it so badly. We We could have a young Carson. We could have a teenage Carson Drew. Or, like, even younger Carson Drew, if he's, like... Or, like, fresh out of law school or whatever. Yeah. I know that that's not a teenager, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, how was Carson on the legal team if... He was... Alexi was, like, 20 at the time. So, Carson was very young. I think he said that, like, he was... He was not senior enough to understand what was going on. Because Nancy asked... If you call him and ask him about him being on the team that convicted Alexi, um, he says, like, yeah, it was really odd. It was one of my fir- very first cases, and it seemed like the jury was ready to convict him without seeing any of the evidence or anything. And he said, and I asked the judge about it because I was like, this is weird or whatever. And the judge said, like, you're too young to know what's mm. going on. 
like sit down basically. So Carson and Alexi must be somewhat close in age. Then. Right. He says, in retrospect, I regret not being more like more upfront and more forceful in my opinions. Mm. But he thought he just, he was just, he just didn't understand something. So that would have been so good. Yeah. That would have been yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly, the voice actor for Alexi has passed away. Oh, but if we were to go like a younger person, yeah, younger, her active has never shied away from changing up voice actors for the same of character. Course. You know, that of wouldn't course. be too big of an issue. Yeah. Yeah. He also voiced um, Magnus and Gunner in Sea of Darkness as well. Same oh. actor. Yeah. Wow. How talented. Yeah. That's, he was very okay, talented. Alexi's voice is very good. Yeah. And I really think like he has. Him. Aside from maybe Chief McGinnis, who's just excellent on all counts, he has maybe mm-hmm. like the most distinct, and maybe even more than Chief McGinnis, he has the most distinctive voice. And yeah. I think, yeah, especially now that you've told me that he did those in Sea of Darkness, like well, that's quality. Those are, yeah. those, that's some good voice acting. Yeah, yeah, I think he passed away shortly after Sea of Darkness came out. So mm. sadly, I don't think we're going to get any more Alexi if, if her interactive even gives us more games <laughs> in the future. <laughs> if her interactive even gives us another Nancy Drew game in right, the future right. is up for debate. But yeah. Sure. Yeah. But it would have been nice at the time if they'd mm-hmm. considered doing something like that. And I think that yeah. this points to them leaving it open for that possibility. But I don't know if they ever actually planned something. Well, you know, we could do, we don't have to do this style of game. We can do like the dossier style games with Alexi. (gasps) Yes. And that would be great. Like easier to develop, faster to develop, pump more out, like Mm -hmm. revenue stream. Like you could do them like a, yeah, mystery Huntsville style case file games. (sighs) And wouldn't it? And there could be little Easter eggs for like the Nancy Drew games. And so people would buy them for that and for the easy play time, you know, like, yeah. Ah, missed opportunity. <laughs> oh, Lexi. Y'all listen, her interactive call us up. We got so many ideas. <laughs> so many, Ooh. we can't contain them. Oh yeah. I could just spit ball for hours on this yes. crap. <laughs> We need a Deirdre spinoff. We need an Alexi (laughs) spinoff. There are so many different avenues, too, for, like, sorry, content production. I'm sorry. (laughs) Good, like, hire me. I could could do this all day. You could write a Deirdre blog. Like, there are so many things. So many things. Mm -hmm. You could write it. You could write a whole book series. I mean, you'd have to get Simon & Schuster to publish it. But, like, you could do that. Listen, Simon and Schuster, we have an idea. <laughs> we have several ideas. Oh, yeah. Anyway, okay. Full flashlight score, Corey. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna go with three, three flashlights. I think. Uh, yeah. I think I have to give it a two or a two and a half, mm, just okay. because it wasn't fun to play. Like. Yeah. The, I mean, like, aside from, like, the moments of joy that you get from talking to specific characters or seeing, like, specific, like, ooh, I recognize that kind of a thing, it was not fun. Yeah. Like, and so for that, it loses, like, a good amount of stars for me. If it's not enjoyable to play through, what is the point of you? You know what I mean? Like. No, that's fair. No, two and a half feels more right, actually. I think I was being generous with three. I mean, I would love to give it three. I think I. I think for like the premise, like the idea, the concept, uh, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I wish, I really wish it had been better, but it's just not. So, <laughs> especially yeah. when you consider that this was a, a an anniversary edition yeah. game, it's like you should have really put some more effort. <laughs> Well, and again, the the concept is great. Like having okay, yeah. we're gonna make this big twenty fifth and like twenty fifth game. I guess it's not an anniversary, but it's a uh, like yeah. a milestone for their sure. games. Sure, Bess, George, Ned, Chief McGinnis, Carson's on the phone. We're in River Heights. We've got yeah. there's so much opportunity. No Togo, sadly, but oh, I think yeah. we hear him bark at one point. Yeah, we do. When Chief McGinnis knocks on the door. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We should have gotten to see him, but that's okay. Yeah. We get a picture of him at one point, don't we? In an earlier game? 
Oh yeah, we give. Yeah, I think we get several pictures of Togo yeah. throughout. Um, See, yeah. we already know what he looks like. Just put a dog in the game. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. never mind. Sorry, I'm getting there. <laughs> <sighs> that would have been. Oh my gosh, just having Togo in the living room on a little cushion, mm-hmm. just that you could just go pet. His dog bed's in the corner, but he's at yeah. George's house. George's mom is taking care of him so that... If George is staying at the Drew home, which they mentioned that she is, why can't she just take care of Togo there? Why exactly. can't we interact with Togo? Why exactly. can't it be a daily task thing that George has to feed the dog? Why? They didn't... Well, one, this game is set in just the course of one afternoon. <laughs> Two, we never go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> Two, they didn't want to animate him, which is rude. I get it. I Very get it, rude. but like they have animals in other games. Yeah, plenty of Couldn't games have, just have animals. Could have used one of those and models dogs. and tweaked it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, just get a ghost dog and make him smaller. <laughs> Change the coloring a little bit. Yeah, but oh well. It's just because then if we had to feed Togo, even if it was just once, then George would. We could get the we could get the Nancy Drew kitchen, and George has to go in the <gasps> kitchen get yes. that food. That would be lovely. Okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's our review of Albine Ashes. <laughs> um, I would say play it, but I think there are definitely other Nancy Drew games you should play first. Yes. Um, maybe even put this one last. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about last. There's other worse ones. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Maybe. <laughs> Well, do you want to tell them what we're going to cover next? Yes, I do, Corey. So next up, we are going to be covering, I don't know, the numbers for these games. Number nine, Danger on Deception Island? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, I thought so. Alrighty, well, thanks for listening, Regular Drews. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Regular Nancy Drew. Email us at regularnancydrew at gmail.com. If you like this episode, make sure to rate, review, and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram at regularnancydrew and Twitter at regularnd. You can also support us on Patreon. Patrons at the $3 level vote on upcoming episode topics and get exclusive access to our Scoop Sesh series. And all patrons receive early access to each episode as well as weekly bonus content. And to all you regular Drews out there, thanks thanks for for listening. listening.